The Outpost game mode has returned to Battlefield 5 for this week's Tides of War Unlock mission. Now, in the game mode's absence, DICE has made quite a few changes to improve the gameplay experience, and in my opinion, Outpost is now more entertaining than it was the last time we saw it, and it's been about six or seven months since this limited time game mode last showed its face. DICE has updated the game mode to support two of the Pacific maps. We've now got Iwo Jima and Pacific Storm to play on, so that gives us some new locations outside the European theatre. But the devs have also built in support for the Aerodrome map as well, and that gives us a more linear layout for the Outpost game mode. DICE in general has made a bunch of changes to Outpost, and we're going to get into those in this video, but first of all, I want to give you my opinion of these two Pacific maps on this game mode. Even though there is a Rotation Live supporting all five maps now available for the Outpost game mode, I jumped straight into the server browser so that I could find a match on the Pacific maps. The two of them are set up very, very differently, and they offer completely different experiences. Iwo Jima is a three-tower map focusing the action into a smaller play area, whereas Pacific Storm, that uses nearly all of the islands that are available to set up different towers. On Pacific Storm, it does feel very similar to a match of Conquest, but you're missing the A flag and the G flag closest to the two HQ points, so the action is still focused into those larger central islands. Now, of the two, I prefer Iwo Jima, and that's because, for me, it gave me more of the fast, frantic, infantry-focused gameplay that I really like in Battlefield 5 for a longer period of time. With only three different points to try and capture, control, and upgrade, the amount of different options available to you at any one time is smaller, and that creates nice little pockets of gameplay around the towers and in between them once the vehicles become available, and I'll talk about that in just a second. The A Tower, that sits up on top of the peak where the crashed transport plane is, and that gives whichever team holding it a really nice vantage point across the lower part of the map, which is largely unused here on the Outpost game mode. That lower area now makes for a really good flanking corridor, especially if you're going across on foot because you can use the vegetation to hide yourself as an infantry soldier. But if you are in a transport vehicle, you can get across it quite quickly and you're lower down, potentially below where some tanks are sitting. So you can kind of move through without being noticed. The B Tower, that sits again on top of a hill vantage point, but it's across the other side of the map and this location is hugely exposed. This is the tower that was fought over most often when I was playing my rounds of Outpost earlier today, and the main reason for that is because it's a massive risk for either team to make their way up onto what is essentially flat open ground to try and either arm and destroy the current tower or upgrade the tower that's already there if that team owns it. There are fortification positions up there that provide some shelter for you, but again, you have to build those once you arrive, and more often than not, they're destroyed when the tower is destroyed because of the large explosion. So this tower location becomes a perfect king of the hill moment, with just loads of infantry players trying to scrabble around the rocks at the base, trying to gain any ground they possibly can. And then the Sea Tower location, this one is kind of completely different to the other two towers on the map. This one is nestled away, it's sheltered in one of the bunker locations on the map, and it's connected to the small cave system. The fortifications at this location are really tight around the tower, and that makes it a bit harder to attack from the outside. But the cave system, that provides you an almost unlocked route in. There aren't any fortifications within the cave, so it'd be wise to use those if you're trying to approach the tower. But the caves also make a really good place to defend from, since you're unable to be hit by any of the planes in the sky when the bombs start dropping, so you can expect a few gunfights to happen in and around those caves during your rounds. With two fairly open towers and one more sheltered one, the map is a little bit lopsided, admittedly. The A and the B towers, they are much closer to the Japanese spawn location, which means most of the time the Japanese faction are going to take the lead and they're probably going to hold on to it 
for most of the round, despite the B point changing hands quite often. It's going to be the case that the Japanese will still hold on to it for longer than the Americans will. Because the A tower, the other one, is so close to the Japanese spawn, it can be easily defended from attacks by the Americans. And that means for most of the round, this tower is just adding recruits onto the scoreboard without interruption for the Japanese. On the flip side though, the Americans will find it relatively easy to hold on to the C tower location because it's a straight line to get there from their spawn point. But pushing up to the B tower, that becomes much harder when the Japanese already have that early advantage. Despite this though, Outpost on Iwo Jima is still relatively good fun. It is slightly soured by the unbalanced location of the towers, but it's always offering you the frantic infantry gameplay. And that's kind of reflected over on the aerodrome map as well, where things get kind of linear. It's like DICE has added these as an infantry flavor to Outpost. Even though you can use vehicles on the maps, of course, once they become available, it kind of feels like DICE chose both of these because they wanted to add more infantry into Outpost and then focus Arras and Pacific Storm and the other map, Mercury, with a little bit more focus around vehicles. But let's now talk about these Outpost game mode changes because things are a little bit different to what they were before and I think it's important that you know about these changes before you go and jump into the mode. DICE took on a lot of feedback from the last time that Outpost was live back in the summer of 2019 and there are some rather big changes to the mode as well as some smaller ones or more nuanced ones that you might not notice. So first of all the recruit limits which is basically the score that you see at the top of the screen the score that you need to achieve to win the match that is now based on the number of radio towers that are actually on the map. Iwo Jima that has the smallest number of towers so the score limit is 75. It's 25 score per tower, 3 towers equals 75. And on Pacific Storm, the score limit is 125. There are 5 towers on that map. Each tower still has 3 upgradable levels, with each rewarding either 1, 2 or 3 recruits worth of score every 60 seconds, depending on the level that you've upgraded the tower to. This 60 second score timer is intended to provide a match duration between 25 and 30 minutes. So things should go on a little bit longer than they did before. When it comes to vehicles in Outpost, things have been changed a little bit. DICE has tweaked how and when armoured ground vehicles and planes will spawn onto the maps in Outpost. Tanks will become available to both teams when one team reaches 50% of their recruit score limit. That means for the first 50% of a match, there are no ground vehicles and no planes in the sky. It's pretty much infantry and transport vehicles. And then the planes, they become available to both teams when one team reaches 75% of the recruit score limit. Now DICE doesn't explain why they've done this, but I've got a feeling it's to create a little bit more of a link between these recruits that you're scoring and the reinforcements that then become available and secondly to lessen the impact of planes and tanks immediately firing on the towers at the start of matches. That was one of the biggest problems Outpost had last time so it's nice to see that not happening this time around. The bomber planes that were active in Outpost back in the summer those are no longer available on the European maps. Only fighters will be available for use and this again is likely going to stop spam on the tower locations from those bomber pilots who just knew where the infantry was going to be most of the time. The towers themselves and the way that you hold on to them have seen some big, big changes. Towers now need to be owned and defended for a certain period of time before they can be upgraded to their next level. You're going to see a timer in game and a message on the screen that lets you know how long you've got left before you can upgrade the tower that you're near to. And I think DICE has done this to improve the defensive side of the game mode, which was one of the key elements that I really liked in the old version. But unfortunately, at the time, there wasn't a mechanic or a message in game telling players that defending the towers was the best way to win a match. To go along with these delayed upgrades now, DICE has also increased the score that you get for defending a tower location and they've doubled the frequency of the scoring event. So you're going to get more XP 
if you're dedicated to defending the tower locations. Another change to the towers, depending on the tower upgrade level, so level 1, level 2 or level 3, the bomb countdown timer for an attacker when they want to blow one of the towers up, that is going to be longer than before. So if a tower is at upgrade level 3, you're going to get the longest countdown time. If it's only at level 1, it will be much shorter. And then lastly, DICE has made changes to prevent players from accidentally or intentionally blocking towers from being constructed. So you won't have to move backwards and forwards anymore to get the fortification tool to lock onto the tower, and you won't be able to park vehicles over the tower location either, which was a big problem before. As far as I could tell from the few rounds that I played, I think I played six or seven this morning, the changes have definitely had an impact on how people play Outpost. There's a lot more defending happening with players just sticking around the towers that are in danger of being taken. People want to upgrade the towers a little bit more. There were lots of people hanging around to do that. And people were building fortifications around them a lot more frequently as well. They do get blown up quite a lot. V1s coming in, artillery strikes, so fortifications are being destroyed all the time. People were building them back up really, really quickly. It is worth remembering that fortifications were sped up with the launch of the Pacific. So the last time the outpost was live, the fortification speed was half of what it is right now. So that might be having an impact. People more inclined to actually build fortifications because it doesn't take a freaking age to do it. What you end up with as a result of this is more intense battles happening around each of the towers instead of flash in the pan throwaway gunfights between two or three people outside the tower zone because there's no cover. And that was a situation that occurred quite a lot the last time that outpost was live. Overall, I really like the changes that DICE has made. It was already a game mode that I really enjoyed, so now it's an even better game mode that I can go and play. So, there you have it. Outpost is here, and I think it's better than what it was before. Let me know your thoughts on the game mode down below in the comments section. If you like it more now, or if it's not really a mode for you, let me know. If you liked the video, make sure you drop a like, or if you didn't, you can click that dislike button. And make sure you're subscribed with notifications switched on so you don't miss any future videos. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.